Fourth meeting order. Mr. Rogers, would you do the invocation followed yes, by the pledge, please? Stand, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for this city, Lord. Thank you for our country. Pray that you'd help us to have wisdom as we make decisions for the city. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda tonight is a public hearing. Mr. Goulart. Thank you, sir. Um, the first public hearing is going to be on the proposed 2015 uh, budget for the city of Fort Oglethorpe. Uh, that budget uh, is in, in the amount of $13,808,551 uh, for the revenues and likewise the same for the expenditures. That would be ordinance ordinance number 2014-12 now the purpose of the public hearing is to afford the public an opportunity to come forward ask any questions you have or make any comments that you'd like to make on the 2015 proposed budget but if you do i would like for you to come forward sign your name and print it and then you'll have the podium and you can ask questions or make comments and with that being said is there anyone in the audience that would like to comment or ask any questions on the 2015 budget for the purpose of the record uh, let it reflect that there's no one in attendance that wants to comment the second public hearing is on the amendment to the 2014 budget. Uh, we had an operating budget, but due to some unforeseen uh, reasons and expenses, we had to amend it. It's ordinance number 2014-13. And that amendment provides <clears throat> for total income in the amount of $692,218.13. Likewise, the same expense, that's out of the general fund. And water and sewer, the income 35820 And likewise, the total expense of 35820 as an additional uh, as additions to the 2014 budget uh, with that having been said is there anyone in attendance that would like to ask any questions about the budget amendment for the 2014 budget very good let the record reflect that there's no one in attendance that uh, wants to make any comments or inquiries as to that budget amendment. <clears throat> the next public hearing will be on ordinance number 2014-14. It's a rezone from a C2 to a C2 special exception. The owner of the property is Ted Moss, doing business as Volunteer LLC. It's map and parcel number 0012C0100A8. It's 178 Fort Town Drive, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. The <clears throat> second track is ordinance number 2014-15. It's rezoned from C2 to C2 special, accession, special exception. The owner is Ted Moss, DBA Volunteer LLC, map and parcel. 
0012C010A9, Fort Town Drive, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. And <clears throat> this special exception is for storage units on a commercial track. Uh, with that being said, is there anyone in attendance that would like to uh, ask any questions concerning these two tracks and this special exception to the zoning? Okay. Let the record reflect that there's no one in attendance that indicates that they have any comments or questions on those two. And Mr. Mayor Pro Temp, with that being said, uh, I declare these uh, public hearings closed and the meetings back in to you. Thank you, Mr. Goodlark. Next item is the approval of the minutes from the previous council meeting. If all the council members have had a chance to read them, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> they are approved. <coughs> Next item, communications from the mayor. Ms. Burrs, I believe, is first. Did I get the name right? You did. All right. Council information for each of you. Is it proper to bring it up? Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So, as you said, my name is Jenny Burrs. I am with the Chattanooga Track Club, and thank you for a few minutes on your agenda. I'm here to report on the Chickamauga Battlefield Marathon, which will be taking place at the battlefield on um, November 8th this year, Saturday. It's always the second Saturday in November. So I wanted to give you all a report and answer any questions that you have. First of all, just as a reminder and to some of, the, some of you all that are new to the council, the Chattanooga Track Club was founded in 1970. This is the 35th year that we've put on this race and our goal is to promote running and fitness. And this is the, one of the ways that we do it and it's one of the ways we support our goal. The, uh, as I mentioned, the Chickamauga Battlefield Marathon, this is the 35th year, and we could not do this event without the city of Fort Oglethorpe. We appreciate the support of the police department, the fire department, and public works. And they have been great thus far in the planning stages of this, making sure that we're, put, we're preparing the roads properly for the race um, and making sure that we're keeping the racers safe while they're on the roads. Um, a couple of things that I really want to point out because my, I know my time is limited. The first page, you can see definitely what the national recognition is of this race. And these are, this is recognition that comes as a result of this race and people coming to the city of Fort Oglethorpe and their experience here. I've provided a schedule for you here. and this this is an, uh, my personal invitation to each of you to come and participate in any or all of this, uh, beginning with the packet pickup on Friday at First Baptist Church. We have a pasta dinner and we have a Barefoot Nelly. If you're into bluegrass, they come and play and you just got to show up. And um, we would love for you to come and be a part of any of the festivities. So that's a quick and dirty schedule. Just uh, at the bottom of that page, some event data. So if any of you that are, in, any of you that are into demographics, it kind of gives you an idea of the type of person that's coming to visit Fort Oglethorpe for that weekend. The second page, um, hopefully you'll really be interested in, which is the economic impact. We, um, uh, we estimate that there's over $100,000 worth of uh, economic impact to the city of Fort Oglethorpe um, as a result of this race, and that is events leading up to this weekend and then post-race events that take place. And I've highlighted for uh, some of the things for you, 32% of our budget in 2013 for race expenses was paid to Fort Oglethorpe businesses. I've included some of those major businesses, which include Art Venture, The Print Shop, CC's Pizza, Hardee's, Panera, Subway, Catoosa County Schools, um, TNT Produce, and Angel EMS. Um, over 3,000 visitors, which of course spend money here. They stay in the hotels, they shop at the, the restaurants, they buy gas. So that's another way that we measure the impact. We also make contributions to a lot of your uh, to a lot of um, organizations in the community, including Lake U Lakeview Fort Oglethorpe Junior ROTC, which I can't say enough about. We have over 70 kids that are going to be helping us this year, 
and we make a contribution back to that program. First Baptist Church of Fort Oglethorpe and then the Fort Oglethorpe Tourism Association. Every year we make a contribution back to the Tourism Association and generally we don't like to give them money. We like to help them buy something that they need. Um, three years ago we painted the flagpole in front of the museum, had it refurbished and painted it. And then um, last year we gave them a donation, which I know Chris is going to be talking about, for the, um, the visitor's kiosk, which helps promote events that are going on in Fort Oglethorpe um, that the Tourism Association is putting on. I also mentioned the hotels, which are sold out. And then there's some other key um, points there. The last one being that, uh, once again, after the race and before the race, there's a lot of impact where people come to the park and do their training runs. They buy gas. They eat at Panera. And then they come back after the race because they love this area so much. It's a great place to run. So, um, And just as an added note, we the Chattanooga Track Club recently received a national National award as a runner-friendly community organization and one of the areas that we highlighted was Fort Oglethorpe and that was a part of us getting that award so um, you all are to be commended. The last page that I provided for you which is new and I'm really excited about we've gotten great support from the community is the new historic Fort Oglethorpe 5k we added a 5k last year the route just didn't work for us that well so we started looking at how could we reroute the race and we decided to take it from Fort Oglethorpe from the Barnhart Circle area back into the neighborhoods that have some of the historical markers because the idea is to focus on the history of this community and there was a great a 3.1 mile course that went up into that neighborhood that is on the ridge that looks over the city and that's the course we're going to try out this year and hopefully it's a great race there's all kinds of potential for it to grow so we really thank you all and your support in, um, in making this piece of the race happen and I've provided for you just kind of a quick overview of what that race will entail and with that I'll see if there are any questions. <laughs> Ms. Spurs, yes. exactly how many people have registered to date for the 5K? For the 5K, we are expecting over 300 runners, which is great for a first-time course. And to date, we have over 220 runners that are registered right now. And for any of you that are familiar with 5Ks, people wait to the last minute to register for a 5K. It's no big deal for somebody to wait to see what the weather's going to be like. So we will well exceed 300 runners, even though 220, two weeks out, sounds low. Um, we totally expect, we set our goal for 300 this year, so we totally expect to meet that. The other thing about the 5K is um, everything that we do, we have some sort of benefactor attached to it. In this particular race, $5 of every registration fee goes to Children's Hospital. So we're proud to be continuing that tradition on with this particular race, or portion of the race. Excellent. Ms. Spurs, where exactly could a walker runner register, and how much does it cost? The registration fee is $30 and they can go to battlefieldmarathon.com which is a great site that features all sorts of things about Fort Oglethorpe and it also gives a link for people to register. Excellent. Thank you. What else? That was fantastic. And well thank you all. Great. Again, great we couldn't do it without the city support so we appreciate you and we'll be reporting back to you after the race just to let you know how it went. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Next is Mr. Rhodes, Principal of Battlefield, Battlefield <coughs> Primary. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Burr's free plug for you. Uh, I will be running the half marathon on that day. Awesome. So, yes. Been training for that. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, <laughs> don't, don't, don't count the eggs till they're hatched there, but we'll, 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 we'll get going there. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, come talk to you this afternoon or this evening, whatever the case may be, about my school. Whenever I have a chance to talk about Battlefield Primary School, I, I relish that opportunity. Um, every principal thinks they have the best school. Uh, I'm, I'm just like that. Uh, I've never seen uh, as hard a working staff and as loving a staff as I have at my school. Uh, if you allow me about five minutes, I have some, some slides I'd like to show you, some, some data, some information, and just some pictures of what we got going on there. Uh, Battlefield Primary School, just real quick, going through uh, some of the recent awards that we've received uh, from the state. On uh, the year 1314, 
uh, the state of Georgia came out with a brand new evaluation system for schools. The acronym is CCRPI, and I'm not going to bore you with what that means, but that's an evaluation of schools. Uh, in the initial evaluation of all state schools, public schools, we ranked number two in the whole state uh, of primary schools, and that's kindergarten through second grade. Uh, of all schools in the state, we ranked 17th. Uh, the year after that, which was last year, the state changed a little bit as far as how they evaluate primary schools. Uh, the state, um, because of budgetary constraints, do not give a standardized test for my grade level. So they get the students that were with us who've moved on to another school, third grade, evaluate them, and then those results are used to judge us. Uh, you see last year we were still the highest ranked school in Catoosa County, uh, and we were voted best of the best last year. This year we'll see, but we're still very proud of what we've accomplished there at Battlefield Primary School. Uh, I was able to break down uh, some results for you here. These are uh, school by school, K through second grade. I want, you, I want to be clear on this. Uh, these are just through second grade. Boynton and uh, Tiger Creek, et cetera, go on through fifth grade, but I just cut off the, the data at second grade. Uh, in math, this is uh, a common assessment that we all give called STAR and early literature. And uh, as you can see, we scored 84%, which was the highest uh, of all the schools in the county, elementary schools. And in reading, which was also measured, we are at the top again um, in, in that area as well. So we're, we're kind of proud of that. Uh, many times these kindergarten kids, you know, I invite you to come to school someday to, to see these kindergarten kids come in, some of them knowing nothing, and then they work their magic as the teachers and they come out of there just able to read and it's just amazing. It's a modern day miracle uh, to see it. Some of the things that we have that help us uh, are computers. I love technology. Uh, that's something that I like to use. We, as you see down here at the bottom, we have three or four computers or laptops per classroom. We have a computer lab and nine computers in the, in the media center mini lab. But we got iPads too. Um, I was able to, a little technical difficulty here. There we go. I was able to purchase with some federal funds some iPads. And right now I have three to four per classroom. Let's see what we got next. Uh, and there's five in the media center for a little uh, area there for the students and one iPad per teacher. So with additional monies, and the state is trying to push the, the assessments that were taken, those tests that you saw, they're, they're really wanting to push the use of technology to take those tests now, not just pen and, or pencil and paper. So the more of this I can get in my billing, the better off we'll be. Uh, electronic whiteboards, you may know what they are. It's kind of, when I first saw one, I thought it was a whiteboard you could draw on, but it's a, an interactive board. You can see the teacher there with a special pen. They can manipulate things on the board, and the kids can come up and interact with it as well. And it definitely engages the kids in that. Uh, enough about uh, the, the classroom and, and data. I, when I, this is about a, a project I started last year. It was very special to me. When I got to Battleford Primary School about five years ago, there was this big, massive, empty spot there. There was just, I was just, what are we going to do with this? And, and they said you couldn't dig there because of pipes and wires and things of that nature. Um, but through the help of Home Depot right across the street from me, uh, they were able to build me some raised flower beds or garden beds. And that's, this picture was taken right at the beginning, and we had some dirt dumped in and some parent volunteers who graciously donated their time and money to amend the soil. And um, it's kind of dead now. I still got peppers growing, but this past, this past summer, uh, we were able to grow corn, peppers, squash, zucchini, tomatoes. We just had a plethora, and as things would come in to be harvested, I would send out a text to everyone, and they were free to come in and just help themselves. And by the way, you're officially invited next summer as well to come to Battlefield <laughs> Primary School and, and get whatever fresh produce you would like. Uh, of course, it would all be null and void if without my faculty and staff, they like to have fun just like their principal. And this is, a, as you can see, a Dr. Seuss day. 
uh, a reading day. Uh, these are first grade teachers and pair pros. And uh, let me wrap it up by saying this Friday, uh, this Friday, well, let me get through this, we're having our Star Wars and Superhero Day. So you are, of course, invited as well to uh, join us this Friday as we uh, have fun on Halloween. Uh, any questions or positive comments, I hope, about Battlefield <laughs> Primary School? I'd just like to say uh, I witnessed it firsthand. Uh, my, I've got a son that's fortunate enough to be a student at Battlefield Primary, and, and uh, I get to work with Mr. Rhodes uh, through the school council and you've got amazing staff i mean it's 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 first class and and i'm i'm proud that uh we have uh y'all in our community and teaching our kids because i know people see that tax bill and they see that and i, I know i, I will not but uh <laughs> what it goes to but what what it's doing to our, and molding our young kids is amazing and that that community garden uh, my, uh kyler he he just had a blast with that you know and i know uh, a lot of the students but uh, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you Mr. Crawford. I'd like to say teachers they, just, they know no profession like it. I got a brother and sister-in-law uh, in Missouri and what y'all have to go through with whew, I respect you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and truly thank you. <laughs> One more thing I'd like to just touch on real quick and I know uh, uh, Ron could uh, touch on this a little bit better but with <laughs> with uh, with today's securities and different s situations with school shootings and stuff like that I know uh, co uh, I call him coach suits but uh, uh, mr. suits he 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 has a great uh, plan and and I know y'all went over it and I know the city has uh, uh, dealt with the police department and being able to be yes. first responders and stuff like that yes. as well. We're well prepared. And, and Mr. Suits, as you mentioned, has come up with some uh, pretty amazing ideas. And I, I could spend another hour talking about that, but he, the, the idea of locking down a school and people hiding behind doors doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, it's about getting out of there. And so we're developing plans where, where, if God forbid something ever does happen, that we're out of there in a safe and orderly fashion, um, away from danger. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Rhodes. We certainly appreciate the Thank effort you. you and your staff mm -hmm. do for the. I always feel funny calling them kids nowadays because especially when you're talking about your computers and all that because most of them in the second grade can do one a lot better than I can. We yeah. certainly appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Cray. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I have one more item under communications from the mayor. I've got a letter here dated October 25th addressed to Mr. Goulard. Mr. Goulart, my name is Kenny Hensley. I am the president of Rolling Thunder Chapter 2, Tennessee. We're involved in a lot of ceremonies which honor our veterans, MIAs, and POWs. Here recently, we have had the honor to do several ceremonies alongside of your city council lady, Paula Stinney. I work and lobby a lot of government officials, and I must say that this lady represents your city in a most honorable and professional manner. Paula is genuine in her efforts to help veterans, recognizes the ones that are missing, and respects the family members of the ones that never came home. She understands the sacrifices that are made by our military and their families. Seems like every time I'm in your, in your city doing some event of honor, I know that she is close by and tirelessly making sure the ceremony proceeds without a hitch. We have done three road dedications, six Calvary poker run, fundraiser for Jan Blevins, and the planning of the POW MI tree at the Citizens and Veterans Memorial. I see her on TV speaking of veterans and all the local events out there to help families of veterans and veterans themselves. Paula Stennett is a huge asset to your city, and I feel the need to let you know this because I can tell that her efforts are real. And it's signed by Kenny Hensley, Rolling Thunder, Tennessee, number two. Congratulations, Ms. Thank, Thank you.
Next item is second reading of ordinance number 2014-12, Mr. Gulak. This is ordinance number 2014-12, ordinance to approve the 2015 physical year budget for the city of Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. Uh, the proposed budget uh, we covered just a few minutes ago in the public hearing, but the proposed budget for the second reading is revenues of $13,808,551, Ex expenditures $13,808,551. Out of that, uh, a portion of it is the water and sewer, which is four million six hundred and seven thousand two hundred four hundred and six thousand. I mean, four hundred and six four million six hundred and seven thousand two hundred in expenditures for the water company. That's second reading. Next item is second reading ordinance number twenty fourteen dash thirteen. This is ordinance number 2014-13. It's ordinance to amend the 2014 fiscal year budget, which was ordinance number 2013-23 for the city of Fort Oglethorpe. And the budget amendment provides for additional revenues in the amount of $692,218.13. In income and expenditures of $692,218.13. Water and sewer portion of the budget amendment is the income increase would be $35,820. Likewise, the expenditures would be 35,820. That's second reading on the budget amendment for the 2014 budget. Second reading ordinance number 2014-14. This is ordinance number 2014-14, rezoning be it ordained by the mayor and council of the city of Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, and it is hereby ordained by the authority thereof that the following property owned by Ted Moss, D D DBA, as volunteer LLC in care of Chad Young, attorney, property known as map and parcel number 0012C0100A8, Fort Town Drive, Fort Oglethorpe, Fort Oglethorpe Georgia, 30742, is hereby rezoned to C2 Special Exception. That's second reading. Second reading, ordinance number 2014-15. Ordinance number 2014-15, rezoning, be it ordained by the mayor and council of the city of Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, and it is hereby ordained by the authority thereof that the following property owned by Ted Moss, DBA, as volunteer LLC, <coughs> in care of Chad Young, attorney, property known as map and parcel number 0012, C zero one zero zero A nine Fort Town Drive, Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, three zero seven four two is hereby rezoned to a special exception zoning. That's second reading. Thank you, Mr. Gula. Next item under new business: proposed approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Fort Oglethorpe, the Sixth Cavalry, and Catoosa County for use of 2009 SPLOSS funds for improvements to the museum. Mr. Gulak. Yes, uh, this is an agreement. It's an intergovernmental agreement <coughs> between uh, Friends of the Sixth Cavalry, uh, the city of Fort Oglethorpe, and Catoosa County, whereas uh, Catoosa County will expend approximately $116,000 of their SPLOSH money to make improvements at the Sixth Cavalry Museum. Uh, those improvements would uh, be primarily the ADA accessible wheelchair lift, uh, restroom additions which are ADA compliant, 
modification of the stairs and doorways to ensure ADA compliance. So I'd recommend uh, approval of that agreement so they can spend those funds there. Thank you. I have a motion to approve. Motion. Make second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Second item, proposed approval CTI engineers to apply for a recreation trail grant. Mr. Goulard, Mr. I can take okay. care of that. Uh, as you know, we have been very, very successful in applying for these recre recreational trail grants. Uh, I think we pretty much have gotten most of them ex with the exception of possibly one. And we, uh, we have an opportunity to apply for another one. Uh, it's in the amount of $100,000, uh, and I would recommend that you approve CTI to uh, pursue application for this. Have a motion to approve. Make a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Proposed approval of December 26, 2014 employee holiday. Mr. Goulart. Uh, the Christmas holiday holidays for the city employees this year, uh, Christmas Eve is on a Wednesday and Christmas is on Thursday. Therefore, we have to crank up and come back in for one day, which can be problematic. Uh, so there's been a consensus among uh, the uh, directors and employees that in lieu of the uh, gift certificate that we normally give to the employees that we forego that certificate and, and in consideration of doing that they would then be awarded the uh, Friday so they would have a three day off period. And I would recommend that, and uh, that uh, that helps in my budget, also since I've already budgeted for the fi Friday pay. Have a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. Have a second. Second. Any discussion? I have one question, Mr. Goodlock. Yes, sir. What about the ones in our fire department, police department's going to have to work that day? They will get that day off the following week. Okay, very good. They will. No one will be left behind. All right, sir. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, number four is a lease between Catoosa County and City of Fort O. I don't think that lease is ready yet, is it, Mr. Stoltz? No, sir. We will strike item number four. Item five, proposed approval for member of DDA. Mr. Goulart. Uh, there's been an application submitted and I believe that DDA has, a, the Downtown Development Authority has recommended a Mr. Robert F. Dial Jr. to uh, serve, uh, serve as a member uh, of that, uh, of the DDA. So I'm recommending approval of him for that position. Have a motion to approve. I make a motion. Second. <laughs> motion and second. Any discussion? I just say uh, Bobby will do a good job on that. He, he's a great person. Anyone else? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. City Manager's report. Mr. Gulak. I have got just any breath left. I have just a couple, not very many. Uh, uh, likewise, we were uh, recognizing Miss Stennett about the things she does for the veterans. Well, today I had to take a trip out to Bentley Place, and that's out there where the colonnade is. And as I was driving by, I could see this individual over there. I couldn't tell what they were doing, but it was at the Veterans uh, Memorial. And so I just turned my car around and drove back over to see what was going on. And sure enough, is Miss Stennett out there working on that Veterans Memorial today. <laughs> so just 
Keep up the good work, Paula. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The uh, <clears throat> the next thing I wanted to report to you, and I think we've uh, we've known this for quite some time. When you obtain these ARC grants, such as the three million dollar grant that we got for the streetscaping on Lafayette Road, it takes a long time to to put those actually to to complete those projects and we have a time schedule which I handed out it's in each of your folders uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get it to you earlier but it's seven pages and the construction bid date for that pro project will be in March of 2019 so it takes time on these federal projects when you have federal money there's lots of things you got to do you just can't start using a dozer <clears throat> and that uh, that timeline will tell you every step and as you can see there's seven pages of things that we have to do uh, we've started construction on the canoe launch uh, I mean not the canoe launch but the walking trail <laughs> behind the multi-use trail behind uh, old Charlie's and Logan's that will accommodate our can canoe launch and I'd like to say something about that too I, Saturday when I was driving down the parkway I looked out to my left and I saw the dozer and it looked like it was moving I took another look and sure enough Somebody was out there on our bulldozer working on Saturday, so I just wheeled around. I thought, well, I'm going to see what they're doing. And it was one of our directors, Jeff Long, was out there That's working Saturday. So <laughs> we've, got some, we've got some very dedicated employees. So anyway, and let's see. The appeal hearing, employee appeal hearing that was set for tonight. You can strike that. That appeal has been withdrawn. We will not do that. <clears throat> and some unfortunate news I have to uh, give you as about four o'clock today, uh, I was hoping we might make it till five, but at about four o'clock, uh, we had a 38 page uh, lawsuit complaint filed in the Superior Court naming the election superintendent as a defendant, the city of Fort Oglethorpe as a defendant, and a candidate, candidate Charles Chirac, as a defendant in that past uh, election contest. So that will be forthcoming uh, after Robbie's had an opportunity to evaluate it. He will uh, obviously respond accordingly. So. Unfortunately, I had to report that to you. And I believe that's all I have. City Council comments. Mr. Smith. Nothing. Ms. Stinnett. Well, council lady comments are not as lengthy today as normal. However, there are some exciting things going on in the city of Fort Oglethorpe. Beginning with tomorrow. It's Showcase Catoosa time. There's 67 businesses this year at the Colonnade, and you will be able to go by, check out each individual business, learn what they have to offer here in our community, including door prizes, photo booth, silent auction, and a taste of Catoosa provided by local residents. So you can take part in and have a taste of some of those dishes. Maybe you haven't had a chance to uh, visit and um, sample. On Saturday, November 1st, first I'd like to thank Fort Oglethorpe's Fire Department because they did come out and they washed down the Citizen and Veterans Memorial that uh, Mr. Goulart mentioned I was at today. They washed it down, made it all nice and clean for the Catoosa Citizens and Veterans Memorial Veteran and Citizen of the Year. Also, Walker County gets involved with that. All veterans who are there at noon will receive a free hot dog. I can't think of any better incentives than to get a free hot dog there. So come out and see who will be our Veteran and Citizen of the Year. Last year's Citizen of the Year is seated over to my right, Mr. Gray. 
On Saturday, November the 8th, Miss Burrs already took my thunder, but it will be the first annual Fort Oglethorpe 5K starting at Barnhart Circle. So make sure you go register for that and tell all your walkers and runner friends. Save the date, because December 6th is the Fort Oglethorpe <laughs> Christmas Parade. We're going to have a lot of entries this year. And make sure this year that you think about, as you make your holiday purchases, spend your money here in Fort Oglethorpe. Keep your money at home. Also, Fort Oglethorpe Recreation, there are basketball sign-ups for ages 5 through 12. It's every Saturday until November the 30th. Here, Fort Oglethorpe City Hall from 12 until 2. Every Thursday until November the 20th. Here at City Hall from 6 until 8. Or you can sign up online at www.lforec.org. Or see Councilman Crawford. <laughs> and that concludes the lady comments for today, or council lady comments. Mr. Crawford. I just like to say everybody thanks for coming out and uh, remember Friday's Halloween. I hope everybody is uh, going to have a festive uh, Halloween, but uh, just drive safe because I know there will be a lot of little ones walking around. So, uh, uh, but I uh, hope everybody has a good uh, Halloween season. and. Uh, that's it. Mr. Rogers. I'd like to say thank you to Chris McKeever for, uh, and the whole group that put on uh, Remembering Our Heroes this past Saturday. We had a good time uh, out there on Saturday. My wife and I were able to go. We had some family in from out of town that were able to, co that were able to come with us. And uh, we had 20 World War II vets. Is that right? 20? It was cool. Um, it's a special opportunity to get to spend time with World War II vets and uh, um, had the opportunity to meet several of them and, and uh, some that I had met in previous, uh, at previous events. So um, thank you for that. That was fantastic. Citizens, petitions, and requests. Ms. Frankie Morgan. Uh, <clears throat> if I may, when the mayor called me this afternoon and reported that he was ill and could not attend. He likewise reported to me that that lady had uh, informed him that she was unable to attend also, so you can remove her. I'm sorry I didn't tell you earlier. Very good. Anything for executive session, Mr. Stokes? No, sir. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. But, 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 <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. All wait, in wait, favor wait, say wait, aye. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> well, what, what? Uh, you indicated. I'd like to come up with something. It has to do with something that happened yesterday. Oh, come on. okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I forget all about that, too. I thought you might have. Yeah. Uh, I just want to advise the council that um, yesterday one of our firefighters passed away. Um, he was in his home and he had a heart attack. It was Tim Moose Pierce and he passed away and um, they moved him to the hospital. His funeral arrangements will be Friday, October 31st at um, 10 o'clock uh, at Boynton Baptist Church. They're gonna have a viewing and then at 11 o'clock they'll have the funeral ceremonies and then from there they're gonna go to the cemetery there on um, Daly Hills Road and that's where he'll be buried. So I just wanted to let the council know about that. Thank you, Glenn. We'll keep him in our prayers. We stand adjourned.